Hi guys, it's Amanda with Eat, Pray, Crunch, and today I'm doing a little bit of a different kind of video. It's a little bit of a life update, I guess you could call it. Um, this last Thursday morning, my grandpa passed away. First of all, my grandpa Smitty was 96 years old, so it was definitely his time. He um, actually had a number of you know health issues that was you know leading him to his body to decline which is what about what you would expect with 96 but but right up until the very last week he had all of his marbles he was sharp as a tack and he knew you know what was going on and was just on top of everything right until that very last week when he actually had a stroke and then he was like mostly unconscious for the last few days to the last week but I think that because he had been so conscious it was probably a blessing in disguise that he had a stroke and was unconscious because that caused his whole passing to be an extremely extremely peaceful one he basically just went in his sleep and that's about as good as we any of us could expect to go right so needless to say it's been an emotional week for me and my family I was I was pretty close with him. Um, I think he was the grandparent that I was closest to just because he lived so long. My first grandfather passed when I was 13 and then um, my grandpa's wife passed away when I was 14 and she had had Alzheimer's for years and so really I didn't really know her that well because she didn't really know who I was for most of you know half of my life at that point um, so unfortunately I just never knew her very well and then my grandma on my dad's side um, I was very close with her too um, although she ended up developing dementia towards the end of her life and so you know she was not all there for the last you know five years or so as well so it was you know a gradual goodbye with her but grandpa made it all this time and I am 31 almost 32 years old because he was around that long I got so much time with him and you know was pretty close with him so even though it's you know expected he was 96 years old it's still very sad and I've been doing a lot of mourning this week and so as all of this was happening we knew that grandpa was going to be passing and it just happened to be at the very very the height of one of Bill's busy seasons at work. He pulled like three all-nighters that week trying to meet this deadline and it wasn't just him like it was everybody at his work working that hard. It was insane and right in the middle of that the night um, you know we had been told that grandpa was going to last probably one more day and so we thought that you know we'd be able to get together you know Bill would be able to finish his project my grandpa lived in Portland and so it's you know and we live in the Seattle area so we wanted to get down to Portland which is a, about a four hour drive and so we thought maybe we had one more day I was gonna go by myself but I really didn't want to do that drive by myself when I was emotional and tired and stressed so we were trying to make it work so that Bill could come with us and I could bring the kids with us too um, because you know I didn't know how long we were gonna be down there we didn't know how long of a process it would be and um, I just wanted to have my kids nearby, especially since Sophie is still nursing and everything. So in the midst of all this, I was, you know, doing everything by myself since Bill was basically at work most of the day. Every day he came home to sleep for a few hours and would go back again. I'm so thankful that my mother-in-law was there for a, for one or two of those days helping me out and I don't know how I would have done it without her, seriously. Especially because on top of all of that, um, we had a huge, huge windstorm um, the night that I was packing for us all to go for the next morning. Um, and the power went out that afternoon. It went out at like two in the afternoon, the day before that we were hoping to leave. And so, and it stayed out all night. And it did not come on until 9.30 the next morning. And that night, um, Bill did not get home until 1.30 in the morning. And so thankfully, that was one of the days that my mother-in-law was there helping me because I don't know how I would have done it trying to pack and deal with two little kids. And they weren't napping because, <laughs> um, you know, my son has a really hard time with, you know, if things are out of the normal routine, he has a hard time. And so, you know, 
the power was out so his night light was not on, his fan was not on, and so therefore he did not nap. Normally Sophie will do two decent naps during the day and she did like one half hour nap that day. It was just, it was an insane day. You know, I got a lot of the packing done, but because the power was out, I had been planning on doing like four loads of laundry that day, but um, the washer went out halfway through washing the cloth diapers of all things. All that time the washer was full of half clean, half dirty. I'm an optimist, I'm gonna say half clean <laughs> cloth diapers. And you know, the power was out so it was just stuck you know, with a washer full of water. And so I couldn't do all the loads of laundry that I needed to do to prepare, to pack, it was, it was insane. And so, and it's getting dark at 4.30 in the afternoon now, being that it's so close to the solstice now. It was just like one thing on top of another. So basically I couldn't get all of the laundry done that I needed to get done in order to pack. And that night, um, Bill did not get home until 1.30 in the morning. And so, and my mother-in-law had left at like 9 p.m. that night after we put the kids to bed. And I say in quotations because like I said, my son Alex has a very difficult time having, you know, no nightlight and no fan going when he sleeps. It really helps him sleep. And so because the power was out and it was like completely silent, he could hear every footstep, every, you know, movement I made going around in the house. And so he basically just didn't go to sleep. So between the time my mother-in-law left at 9 p.m. until my husband got home at 1.30 in the morning, um, Alex was awake that whole time <laughs> and he was not happy. Whenever the power goes out I have a little routine of giving him this little it's like a froggy you've probably seen these things but they like shine like stars onto the ceiling it's like a little stuffed animal that shines stars and the moon onto the ceiling and plays white noise and music and that kind of thing you know so whenever the power goes out that's what we do is we give him that it's a little light and white noise for him and something to snuggle. Last time the power went out, that worked beautifully. Not so much this time. <laughs> the problem is, you know, there's a timer on it and so the light stays on for like 15 minutes or whatever and then it goes out and so then he would be okay and then he would freak out again. So in that four and a half hour stretch, I was in there basically like every hour and snuggling with him for like a half an hour. And on top of that, Sophie was also freaking out because she could hear Alex because the house was so quiet and he was waking her up and then she would wake him up and it was just and I was by myself in the dark with the power out it was just it was stressful let's just say that <laughs> and so you know there were a couple times when I just had to bring Sophie into Alex's room so I could like nurse her while trying to snuggle with Alex in the dark and oh my gosh it was it was crazy so finally, you know, Bill got home at 1.30 in the morning and, you know, we did everything we could do for Alex and like even Bill snuggled him for like fifth or sixth time or however many snuggles it had been at that point. And, um, and we said we just have to let him cry it out because he's so tired. Like he hadn't been, he hadn't had a nap and he didn't go to sleep at all during that time. So it was, you know, 1.30 in the morning and he'd been awake all that time. And normally he goes to sleep at like 8.39. So finally we, I felt so bad, but like we had to go to sleep because we were planning on driving to Portland in the morning and we had to sleep. It was like we had no choice. So he basically just screamed his head off for half an hour and finally just cried himself to sleep. And I felt so bad, but like we had to sleep. It was like, you know, we had to go see my dying grandpa. So then the next morning, before the power came on, we actually got a phone call from my mom saying that we, unfortunately, we missed Grandpa. He had passed at six o'clock that morning and they had practically missed him too, even though they were staying right there in the building. He just went so fast and peacefully. And so we kind of scratched our plans, you know, because Bill and I had been planning on going and taking both kids down with us and staying at one of the guest rooms at the retirement home where my grandpa lived and where they brought the hospice to where he was. Um, but since we missed him and since he passed, we're like, well, let's rethink things here. There, you know, the time crunch isn't as much as it was before because um, you know, we were trying to make it down before he passed, but we didn't. So once again, my mother-in-law came to the rescue. We we're so, so thankful she stayed. We decided to leave both kids here at home with her all day while Bill and I did a whirlwind trip down to Portland and back in one day. <laughs> and so um, 
it's like three and a half, four hour drive. We did that, we left both kids with grandma and we took the drive down to Portland. And you know, I really was kind of sad that I didn't quite make it because there were things that I wanted to say to him even though he was unconscious and you know, I was hoping, you know, they say that hearing is the last thing to go and there were some things that I had wanted to say to him but I didn't get a chance to so I was feeling sad about that and I also, you know, I had never actually been there after my previous grandparents had passed. I had never actually, I'd never actually seen a dead person. And so I was, you know, it was kind of one of my biggest fears in life. And so I was, you know, I felt like I had gotten to a point in my life where I felt like I was mature enough that I could handle it. With the other three grandparents, I felt like I just was not at a place where I could emotionally handle it. Um, but I feel like something about in the last, especially in the last year or two, I don't know what it is, but um, I've really just come to terms with the, you know, with the reality of the impermanence of everything in the world. I know it's very Buddhist sounding, um, but I've just, you know, and I've known it all along in my head my whole life, but um, I've really just accepted it, like really accepted it more in the last year or so. And so because of that, um, I just, I felt like I was ready to, you know, actually see one of my loved ones after they had passed. And so, but I still had to mentally prepare myself. So this whole drive down, you know, we were both, we were sleep deprived after all of the craziness of the previous week. Bill had barely slept in the previous like five days. And so, you know, was, he was running on fumes and I was running on fumes and was just, I had a, so, so much cortisol running through my veins because I was so stressed from, you know, all dealing with the kids and trying to frantically pack, pack, which we ended up not needing to do. And, you know, just dealing with like the fact that, oh my gosh, like my dear grandpa just passed away this morning and just, there was just so much that I was processing, so much busyness. So much emotion going on during this drive down and um, I drove since Bill had barely slept and tried to let him sleep a little on the, on the drive down. So we got down there in the afternoon and my parents and my two aunts and um, all of my cousins and my cousin's kids were there and so it was really good that we got to see all of them. We only got to spend about an hour with them before they actually had to drive back because they live in a different part of Oregon. And so um, we were glad that we got to be with them on that day. And then Bill and I got our chance to go see Grandpa. And um, I got to say all of the things to him that I had wanted to say and um, it was kind of in that moment when I just, when I lost it and I just completely, we both, we both just broke down and, um, and it really ended up, you know, I had had all this fear about, you know, seeing somebody who had passed and it was so not scary at all. And it was just so like my grandpa, he was such a peaceful person and just seeing him there. He just looked like he was asleep and he had this peaceful look on his face and it was a very sacred, sacred moment. And um, we got to, t you know, tell him, you know, all of the things that we had wanted to say. So um, I'm really, really glad that we went down and, you know, got to share that time um, with the family and that we got to see him one last time after we all said our goodbyes and um, after they took him away we um, me and my immediate family we all had dinner together there at you know at one of the little restaurants at the retirement home there and um, I had barely eaten that day like because I just you know, with all of the stress and the emotion, like, I just had very little appetite. I had had some cereal in the morning and, like, a small sandwich for lunch, but that was all I had really eaten all day, and then this was getting to be, you know, like, five or six o'clock, and, um, and suddenly I just feel like, I just felt like I was just, like, my body was done, 
after all the stress and the sleep deprivation and the sadness and the grief, like, um, my body was just like, I'm done. <laughs> and I was like starting to feel like lightheaded and like nauseous and like, I was like, I, I need to go home. Like I, you know, I couldn't even make it through dinner. So I got some like crackers and some like ginger ale to go. And um, I was like, Bill, we've got to go home now. I just want to go home. I just, I feel so sick. I just feel exhausted. And I have basically hit my breaking point. <laughs> I think what happened was, you know, I had been staying strong, staying strong, staying strong for so long. And then like all of a sudden it was all over. And it was just like all of that, all those stress hormones just like dumped into my body and it was just like, ah, it was almost like shock. So for the drive home, Bill had to drive because I was not well. Like I was, you know, I felt like I was going to faint and I was feeling very sick. And um, thankfully I didn't actually like get sick or anything, but I felt like I was going to. And I just was able to like sip fluids the whole way home and... I finally, you know, halfway through the drive, I finally, you know, we took a little pit stop and then I started to feel a little bit better um, for the, and then I, you know, by the time we got towards the end of the drive, I was actually feeling significantly better. So I think I just needed to, you know, like, I was like laying in the car with a blanket and just resting. And I think I just needed that rest and to just like process everything that had just happened. We made it home. So we did that entire whirlwind trip in one day and we were just, completely exhausted when we got home. Thankfully, both of the kids were pretty good for grandma that whole time we were gone and, you know, the power was back on, you know, it had come on that morning. So things were back to normal for the kids. They know grandma, they love grandma. Um, I think Alex knew something was a little off. We were telling him, you know, we told him, he's two and a half, so how much can a two and a half year old understand? But we told him, you know, he had met great grandpa and he remembered him. And so we told him that great grandpa was going to heaven, that he was sick and, you know, ended up saying goodbye. We had to say goodbye to great grandpa and he went to heaven. And that means that mommy and daddy and grandma and granddad are all very, very sad, you know. And um, Alex is a little empath. He's a very sensitive little guy. And I think he knew something was up because he, as Bill and I were leaving earlier in the day, like he was like very clingy, like he knew something was up. And so um, when Bill and I got home, you know, he was fussing a little. And so we, Bill and I both went in and just snuggled him. We just had this little moment of just like snuggling our son, you know, just having this moment of like life and death, snuggling this, this new young, young person who is, you know, the next generation of, you know, in my grandpa's line, you know, and it was just like, it was a nice way to close the day. And the next, the next couple days after that, like I definitely like, I really have exper been experiencing a lot of grief and I wasn't expecting it to be quite so deep as it has been um, because we, we knew it was coming. He was 96 years old. We just, it, we, it was a matter of when, you know, we just didn't know how or when. And so we knew grandpa was gonna pass, but once the reality of it hit, like, I realized just how much I loved him and how close I was with him. And um, so for the next couple days, I just, I spent a lot of time sleeping when I could with the help of, you know, Bill watching the kids and, um, and just mourning and crying a lot. I've cried a lot in the last few days. I had a few really hard hard cries it's hit me a few times and I feel like I've gotten the worst of it gotten through the worst of it now but um but anyway I just wanted to make a video just talk just I think I just needed to talk through all of that <laughs> um just because it's just been an emotional stressful roller coaster um but at the same time I'm really glad that things worked out the way they did um in a way I think that everything happened the way it was supposed to like I think you know, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference had we made it before he passed anyway, because he was unconscious. And I think it would have been really stressful to have the kids with us during all of that emotional stuff. And honestly, it was really nice to just have, even though it was stressful <laughs> and, you know, like the peak of stress, <laughs> um, it was also kind of nice to have that time with Bill and we had 
a lot of reflecting time together just in the car because we were in the car for almost eight hours together that day and there's nothing like being in a car together to just like really bond you know especially when something difficult is happening I just feel like it brought Bill and I closer um, and having going into the room and seeing grandpa together like I just feel like husband and wife you know I just feel like Bill and I had a moment of getting even a little bit closer through that and we had a lot of really good conversations in the car there and back and um, I think I'm going to make another video so stay tuned um, just talking about a lot of the philosophical things that came up um, and just talking about what an incredible human being my grandpa was um, and the kind of life he lived and the kind of legacy that he left for us I'm going to make a separate video on that because there's so much to say about that. So um, anyway, so I think I'm going to end this video here and I know it's probably I'm just rambling on and on. I think this is more just like making a video because it's like therapy for me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sure that plenty of you guys watching have lost somebody that you're close to and you know what this is all about. I just wanted to be really real and you know, share the reality of what's going on in life and you know just kind of working through you know something that's a little bit difficult so anyway so stay tuned I'm going to make a video that's like a tribute to my grandpa and just talking you know some of the things that I've been thinking a lot about lately just about life and death and like birth and just like the whole like you know just getting all philosophical like what is this life that we're living anyway it's really a miracle <laughs> so um so stay tuned for that and thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you found it helpful in some way if it's something that you've gone through and experienced um you know feel free to leave a comment below or give a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel so inclined so Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.